your mind goes, wow, I have this vision here. Okay. That means it's possible. That means your unconscious mind has figured out that it has the ingredients to get there. Okay. Amazing. Now it's time to let that unconscious mind run its algorithm and start to bump those ideas from the unconscious into the conscious. So I can know the next step. This is the deep dive with Adam Roa. What up deep divers. Hi, my name is Adam Roa. I'm your host today. And today I'm going to dive into the topic of why creativity requires space. Because I consider myself a full-time creative. I use my creativity for everything that I do. It's literally the lens that I wear on life itself. And um, I believe that few people really understand how much space creativity actually requires. And when you talk to a creative, someone, an artist or, or someone who really has embraced the idea, because we're all creative, but someone who's embraced the idea of creativity being a fundamental aspect and piece to what they are doing in their life. And therefore they understand the need to cultivate it and develop a relationship with creativity and creative energy. Then they'll all tell you the same thing, which is it requires space. Oftentimes that means just sitting and staring off into space for a while to think about something and, and ruminate and sit with a paper and a pad and just, you know, write a couple lines of poetry and then hit a wall and go, oh, let me just sit here and ruminate, percolate, incubate <laughs> and masturbate if I'm really bored. And so <laughs> I'm saying that there's so much space that creativity requires because of what is actually happening, right? And so that's what I want to dive into in this musing here. But before I do that, I want to encourage you to please leave a review. If you've been getting value from this podcast, then one of the ways that you can provide a, a bit of energy back, some just a beautiful little like blowing a kiss to me across the ether is to leave a review uh, because it helps with the algorithms. It helps this podcast continue to spread and then make sure that you hit that follow subscribe button wherever you are listening to this or watching this. I appreciate you so, so much. And now I want to talk about why creativity requires space. To understand this, I believe the starting point is to always start with the energetics, right? If you haven't, if you've been listening to this podcast, you understand it's, let's break it down to the energetics. What's going on when, when your brain is in a space of creativity, when your brain is, is in that space of wonder? Well, first of all, I believe that what is going on is your creative energy, which is the purest expression of your soul. It is the frequency of your soul. It is the thing that is unique to you. That's why I say if every single one of us listening to this podcast podcast right now was given four lines, you had to write four lines of poetry and the subject was love. We would, every single person listening to this right now would have a different four lines. It would, it, it would not even be close. <laughs> And if I said, okay, everyone listening to this podcast right now, why don't you draw a, an elephant holding a cup of water while standing on a beach ball? I could get super specific and everyone's drawing will look different. <laughs> Every single person here that is listening to this, every single person on this planet, your creative energy is completely unique to you. And so therefore, as it flows through you and out into the world, it will enter the world completely unique. That's magical. That's very, very special because I believe there is no more, there's nothing more healing. There's no frequency more healing than your creative energy flowing through you. And so when it is flowing through you, it's going into a container of some kind. And that could be a drawing, that could be a poem, that could be an app, that could be the words that you're speaking right now, whatever it is, there's a container that you're giving to the um, creative energy to flow into. So when you're being creative with an idea. Let's say you have an idea and you're not sure how to make it happen. 
And this could look like a poem that you're working on. This could look like a business that you want to launch. For those of you who are listening to this, I assume many of you are poets, but let's go with a business. You're an entrepreneur. You have something, you have this creative idea that you want to launch and you, you see how it could work, etc. Understand that what's going on right there is that your mind has already figured out that it's possible. If you can envision it, your mind has already reverse engineered on an unconscious level that that idea is possible. This is hugely important because this, what this also tells you is that the edges of your imagination are the edges of your manifestation. If you want to manifest something into your life, you must first be able to envision it. If you can envision it, it means that your brain has figured out how to make it possible. Think about someone in the like Neanderthal days. They, they're not even going to have the idea for an iPhone. It, it's so far outside the realm of what they could even put together linearly of how to make it. It just doesn't happen. But once a cell phone exists and we have interaction with even a flip phone, maybe that's enough for the mind to extrapolate into the idea of a, a cell phone that you could use your finger just to, to like touch. Or maybe it requires a computer, access to the computer, access to a cell phone. What if you put those things together? Oh my gosh, there's the, okay. Smartphones are born. But recognize that there requires the, the brain to have the ingredients. Now, the piece beyond this, the next step, right? Once you have an idea and you know that it's possible because you have it, the next step is in moving, reverse engineering that and moving from the unconscious into the conscious mind all of the steps necessary to make that happen. How can I make that vision a reality? What do I need to do? What do I get to do here? And that is where the contemplation, the rumination, the incubation happens and the masturbation if you're bored. <laughs> I don't know how many times I'm going to laugh at that. I'm a child. What can I say? I'm a child. And what is that process think about it like this right think about your break those movies where you're breaking into where they're breaking into a bank and they're trying to like hack into the system and there's they're like running a computer algorithm that's basically trying all these different passwords and it's it's like slowly finding it and for some reason they always know how long it's going to take because there's that status bar that's filling up that's telling them exactly how much time it's going to take for them to find this uh password and break into it and meanwhile tom cruise is like hanging by one arm from a helicopter and then the bomb timer is counting down and then you know liam neeson is still trying to find his daughter who's been taken so like all of these things that are heightened but imagine you have this algorithm program i don't know what i'm on today what this algorithm program that you have running and it's trying all of these different permutations of passwords until it finds the right one to hack into the system that is what your brain is doing when it is trying to solve a creative problem when you have a vision for a business that you want to launch, your mind goes, wow, I have this vision here. Okay. That means it's possible. That means your unconscious mind has figured out that it has the ingredients to get there. Okay. Amazing. Now it's time to let that unconscious mind run its algorithm and start to bump those ideas from the unconscious into the conscious. So I can know the next step and you give it space to do that. The more space you give it, the faster that process will happen. It would be the equivalent of you running that hacker program to hack into the bank. Meanwhile, you have 50 open tabs and you're playing Spotify music while streaming YouTube videos and all of your bandwidth is being spread quite thin. 
that program is going to run slower. It is going to take longer to decipher and hack the code. Similarly, with your creative uh, energy and the, the creative bandwidth that you have, if you are giving it, I'm going to try and be creative in the 30 minutes I have while driving my car to go pick up whatever, while meanwhile I'm thinking about the groceries that I need to get, I'm thinking about what I'm going to cook for dinner, and then I'm thinking about, uh, I'm worrying about money, and uh, I haven't done, made that phone call to my mom that I said I was going to do, all of those open tabs are taking up some of your bandwidth, some of your RAM, your processing power. And as a result of that, your efficiency of time in the creative space is much lower. And so what I'm sh why I'm sharing this with you is because I want you to understand the process of what's going on during the space that you take for creativity because it's not wasted space i've had a lot of people in my life over the years who have seen me in certain stages of my life where i'm highly focused on creative projects and what i mean by that because everything's creative right but for example with my online community thecreatecommunity.com for those of you who have not heard about it before we focus on relationships and sexuality business and finance and creativity and self-expression this is an example of some of the stuff i teach in my online community so if you're interested in this stuff make sure you check out thecreatecommunity.com now when it comes to that community there have been periods of deep creative uh hacking where i've needed a lot of space to to, to get to a point of going okay what does this look like creatively what do i think is most effective how do i structure it what would i like to focus on what do the classes look like what sort of um, events do we have coming up that i want to to bring in and how does that tie into everything else that is a creative then there's an execution standpoint and so once i go out of that it's like okay time to execute on that and in that execution, there's often a lot less of the same type of creativity involved because now it's OK, reach out to these people. Uh, it's it's set up these back end systems. It's this, this, this. So what I'm referring to right now is that if your bandwidth is in execution, there's less space for the creative hacking. And I've had a lot of people in my life when I've been in the space of creative hacking, when I was working on my spoken word poetry album, Permission, which is on Spotify for free for whoever wants to listen. Um, I would have friends that came over and I, was, I would just be, you know, taking a lot of space and a lot of time. I would have journals. I would, I would go surfing. I would be sitting out on, on um, my balcony, just kind of staring at the ocean. And they say, Adam, I feel like you never work. <laughs> what do you what do you do? What do you do? I actually had friends that stayed with us and they invited some friends over and they saw the house that we lived in at the time, which is beautiful ocean view home and the kitchen had been featured in a magazine and it was just beautiful. And the two friends that were visiting said to my other two friends, what do they do? Like, I, f I feel like they never work. <laughs> Every time we're over here, they're just, like sitting around and it's an understanding the space that creativity requires the space that is required for your brain to run the algorithm so that you understand those next steps of how to frame something of what the next line of the poem is or the next uh, chord progression of a song is or the the way in which you want to structure your business or restructure your business or your relationship this applies to every area you need to restructure the 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 um agreements in your relationship well what could that look like let me take into account what she wants let me take into account what i want okay what could that look like it requires space for your brain to run that program because what it is doing it is putting together a pattern that it's never put together before your brain is a pattern making and a pattern recognizing machine that is what it does that is how it operates within the realm of time space linearity it needs to put together a b c d e one two three four five it gets to do that 
And so it is searching for the pattern. It is running that program to find the pattern. And it has never put that pattern together before. That is why it is called creativity. It is a new pattern. It is a new innovation. It is a new creation. Otherwise, you're just replicating. Then you're just doing exactly what's been done before. You don't need your creativity. And if that's all you do all day long, for most people, that's stifling. That is going to lead to people feeling incredibly unfulfilled in their lives, depressed, unsatisfied, because they're not letting their soul's frequency move through them. Their soul is saying, please let me come out to play. I just need a container to do it into. And so you are giving yourself the space to, to run the program and put together a pattern that you've never put together before. That is the process of creativity and why it requires so much space. And sure, you can do it in 30 minutes a day, but recognize that if those 30, there's a difference. You might get more done in 30 focused minutes than in two hours of unfocused, depending on that processing power. Anyone who's had one of those old full laptops that you just cannot get it, you try and upload something, it takes 18 hours while your friend's new MacBook is doing it in, in an hour. And you're going, I just want to throw this out the window. You understand what it, it's like to have too much load where, where things are not optimal, too many programs running, brain fog, fatigue, your physical body, not being in good health. These all play a factor in the amount of bandwidth you have for your creativity and the creativity to take its, its process. So while I covered in this podcast, uh, the, the overarching um, kind of way I look at it, understand that it's incredibly nuanced. Literally, your physical health plays a massive role in this. Your emotions play a role in this. Learning how to utilize your emotional energy in a way that boosts your creativity and supports your creativity instead of derails it. That's an important piece to this. The path of creativity, I've, I've spoken about this before, the path of creativity, I believe, is the path of our greatest evolution, highest expansion, and most sustainable development. I'm devoted to creativity. And this is one of the reasons why. Understanding how it works, why it does what it does, and why does creativity require so much space? Now the question is, once you understand this, now that you know this, how are you choosing to take action on it in your life? What are you actually going to shift to create more efficient use of your creative time or more creative time in general? That's the work. Thank you for doing it. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for taking the time to listen to this. If you would like to learn more about creativity and self-expression, in addition to how to cultivate that and turn that into business and how to use that same energy in ways that increase the, the love you have in your relationships, then check out the Create Community thecreatecommunity.com. We would love to have you. We are a growing group of people who are committed to our own growth and expansion, but doing it together in a fun new way. I would love to see you in there. And I want to remind you that always in all ways you are seen, you are heard, and you are loved. Mm -hmm.